Good morning, everyone. Welcome to beautiful Bill Frazier Field. This is Coach Schuster. I'm the pitching coach for the Commodores. We're out here literally on the pitching mound. We're going to talk about some pitching mechanics, maybe some things that you can learn, can practice at home uh, while you're quarantined with the coronavirus and everything. So basically for me, everybody's arm can move forward and can throw something. If you have motor function, I can hand you a rock and tell you to throw it and it will go forward. That's not to say that it will be thrown hard or thrown accurately, but your arm can move forward and does work. So when we talk about throwing accurately and throwing hard, which is a lot of the goal of pitching, we start from the ground up because everybody's arm does work. The difference is not everybody's body works to be able to make the arm move efficiently. All right, so starting from the ground up, first things first, our feet, okay? If you see the rubber here, I'm right-handed, so my right foot will be up against the rubber. But typically, all the time, you want your entire foot to be flush with the inside of the rubber. Okay, we don't really want our foot to be angled that way. Then we're using the ball of our foot, the outside, the toe of our foot to push. You don't want to be all the way this way because then you're not getting the full flush push against the rubber. Okay, you want to be completely flush all the way so that way when you go and you're pushing off this back leg, you have all the momentum against the rubber, you can push off, you can create as much power as you want. Um, typically for right-handed pitchers, you're gonna be on the right side of the rubber. If I'm facing the plate, the right side of the rubber. Uh, for left-handed pitchers, it'll be the opposite, okay? If I'm left-handed, I'll be on the left side of the rubber, typically. Now some of that is a comfort thing, there's not a cookie cutter way, you have, to, you have to do it this way, you have to do it this way. But for the most part, uh, for your right-handers and your left-handers, you're gonna be on that, the side of the rubber that you throw with, simply because if I'm right-handed and I'm facing a right-handed batter, then I'm throwing across that hitter instead of throwing into his barrel. Um, so, rubber positioning is complete. Now, we're gonna talk about our front foot a little bit as far as keeping our feet square when we come set. Okay, everything we're gonna talk about today is gonna to be out of the stretch. We'll get into the wind up at a certain point later on, but as far as the simplification of pitching, we're gonna start in the stretch. We have every, every, all of our pitchers, they start in the stretch for everything we do. Okay, so our front foot, you can put it where you want to be comfortable, but we don't wanna be unathletic with where we place our front foot when we come set. So you don't want it out here or completely off center out in front, completely off center behind you. Okay, typically we wanna be somewhere on center so that we can be athletic, we can be square, closed with our hips and everything, um, which we'll get to later. But a lot of that starts here, okay? We don't want our front foot in a set position to be open at all, because then our hips are already open lose power, lose efficiency, all the stuff that we really need. Um, so your, your front foot is always gonna be at least parallel. You can close it off a little bit if you want, and then somewhere on center where you can be on balance. As we get into our landing point um, and the follow through of actually throwing with our feet, really it's gonna, you know, our front foot, when we hit, it's gonna be heel to toe, um, you know, maybe not, like right on heel to toe, but some sort of the weight is gonna be back and then shift forward. Um, and at that point, your leg extends, you'll come over. But the biggest thing is when you're, when you're at your landing point, you don't want your front foot to be across your body. You don't want your front foot to be all the way open, okay? Again, we're trying to stay square. We're trying to stay in a direction. That's what helps with the efficiency. That's what helps with the direction. Um, accuracy, all that good stuff. So, I mean, you can be a little bit, a little bit closed, a little bit open, but we say it all the time, like you're trying to pitch in a phone booth. All right, well, if you're all the way opened up, you're running into the sides of the phone booth, you're gonna hit the phone, the sides, it's not gonna work. Okay, so we're trying to pitch in a phone booth, in a hallway, something that keeps us directionally on the plate. All right, moving up into our hips. This is probably the biggest one. Um, they're all important, but 
As far as your hips working, that's going to determine a lot of how your body works, how your arm works. Okay. So again, I'm right-handed, so a lot of it is going to hinge off of my back hip, which would be my right hip. Everything will be the opposite for you left-handers out there. Um, but you get a lot of time, coaches, especially at a young age, they tell you to push off the rubber, push off the rubber, push off the rubber. And the thought process is creating momentum, which is a good thought process. But really what we're trying to do is create hip load, okay? Um, you know, you get multiple, you have coaches that tell you to sit down in your back leg. And that's also good to an extent if you create hip load, okay? The problem is if we just sit down and we don't load our hips at all, or if we just push off and don't load our hips at all, we're not maximizing our power, we're not maximizing our efficiency. It's gonna impact our accuracy, it's gonna impact our velocity. So, upon leg lift, when you're loading your hips, okay, you wanna sit into that backside a little bit, and then there's gonna be a little bit of a motion. Uh, the cue that I use with our players is screwing your heel into the ground, okay? And upon that point, you should feel, sorry, I'm not on balance, but upon that point, you should feel tension in your back hip. And when you feel that tension, that's your point where you're loaded up and you know that you can go. Um, as you get down the mound, okay, we wanna keep our hips underneath us for the most part. All right, we don't want our hips to completely run away. We don't want our hips to be behind our upper body. Okay, we want the hips to lead the upper body but we don't want them to run away, right? We wanna be on balance, we wanna be athletic throughout the whole process. So, we've got our good hip load. At that point, our, our front hip, okay, is all the way out in front, all right? Not so far, I'm on balance, I'm in an athletic position still, but my front hip is leading the charge now, okay? The whole time through my delivery, as I get through, my front hip is gonna lead that charge. Notice I'm not coming open at all. Okay, everything's staying closed. I've got my, call it leading with the heel. Okay, I've got my heel pointed towards home plate a little bit. Obviously you can take that to too much of an extreme and it gets funky, but it's a good cue to try to keep your front hip closed. Um, and then as I get down the mound, okay, that front hip's gonna lead the whole time into my plant and my hips are gonna, again, lead my upper body. So as we have that corkscrew motion, we're getting down the mound, getting down the mound, getting down the mound. Our hips are gonna go, they're gonna fire, okay? As long as we don't push too early where we get extended, we're gonna have some amount of rotation for our hips to fire. Okay, a lot of times when, when you hear the cue, push, 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 we lose our hips too early. Now there's nothing creating power all the way through. All right, when we get screwed into the ground then we have that power where we're kind of riding down the mound and we're pushing we're pushing we're pushing but it's not so much so when you fire that you have plenty of power going forward and your hips are going to lead the rest of your body okay that's the most that's why they're the most important piece all right another big thing with your hips especially at a young age okay you get a lot of guys that immediately want to do this they open the gate all right you're losing everything as soon as you do that okay you struggle with high and arm side misses or low and glove side misses a lot of times it's because you're losing your hips too early or you're losing your upper body too early but all of that starts with opening up okay if you're closed with your hips you're probably going to stay closed with your upper body and at that point you're going to be able to stay directional your misses won't be as much high and arm side or low and glove side all right so Biggest flaw, you get here, open. As soon as we're open, we've lost everything. Try to stay closed as long as you can, as long as you can, as long as you can. And then at foot strike, that's when it opens up. That's when you get that good rotation, that good drive, and you're able to deliver a powerful and efficient movement. All right, so continuing up, get into our torso and shoulders. Um, so I heard one time, it's really good, I loved it. I use it with our guys all the time now that I heard it. You create energy with your lower body, but you create stability with your upper body. 
Okay, so when we throw all the time, especially at a young age, we, we want to do it so hard. And we think that throwing hard is going to be creating a bunch of energy with our upper body. Okay, when, in reality, throwing hard starts with your lower body. And then your arm speed and everything obviously helps some people, you know, athletically are just very quick twitch. They have really fast arms, so they throw hard. But as far as efficiency of movement, everything's going to start in the hips, and then the upper body is more for control, more for keeping you in line. Um, so as we get into the torso, okay, when we're in this loaded position, we're going to get a little bit, all right? It's not going to be a lot, and it's going to happen naturally. You don't have to load it yourself where, where you're now getting turned. Right, so for any action, there's an equal but opposite reaction. So if you turn this way, then you have to turn this way to get back to throw, okay? And we have a lot of guys that do that. As they get loaded up, they get turned. Well, directionally, once I'm turned, I'm gonna hit the bull, all right? If you young guys don't get that reference, you need to go watch Bull Durham, it's a really good movie. Um, but directionally, now I've got a problem. If I can keep myself somewhat square, look, I'm, I've got a little bit of a torso load and I'm loaded in my hips, but my shoulders are still on line. So I'm not gonna have that opposite reaction where my shoulders open up because my shoulders were never closed off. So that's really all, all it is with your shoulders. That's really it, okay? And the same thing with the hips. We're trying to keep them square, trying to keep them closed as long as we can. And when that fires, you don't have to fire your upper body because the lower body is going to create all of that. Okay, your hips drive everything. So as soon as your hips go, it's really hard to keep your upper body still, like all the way when your hips go, right? So if I'm doing this at a fast pace and my hips go, immediately my upper body is gonna go with it. So if our hips are efficient, our upper body is gonna be efficient and we need it for stability more than anything. Um, as far as like getting a torso and a core load, again, maybe a little bit of a turn, but most of that is gonna happen naturally when you load your hips. So I really don't want our guys doing a whole lot with their upper body um, as far as their core and their shoulders. All right, now we'll talk about the arm. Okay, number one, throw hard. And what I mean is not a lot of oomph, strong, I mean fast. Make your arm move fast, okay? And there's a difference. When we talk about, it's the same thing with our hips, okay? You get a lot of load up, load up, load up, be strong, be strong, be strong. Well, we're not trying to create strength, okay? Strength helps a lot of these things, but what we're trying to create is power. And power is a function of strength and speed. So we need both of those things. For your arm, strength tightens it up, tightens it up, tightens it up, and you're gonna get to a point where you cannot create the same power with that arm. So you need speed, 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 speed. So everything you do, every time you throw, obviously once you're warmed up, but always when you're throwing, arm speed, arm speed, arm speed, arm speed, arm speed, over and over and over again. Um, and again, we have a problem with a lot of our guys, they wanna come out and they just wanna throw nice and light, real easy, and there's a time and a place for that. But if you wanna throw hard, you have to train to throw hard. And that means you have to have arm speed. Um, so, the way that our arm typically works, okay? Everybody's arm path is different. I, I don't believe in one certain way to throw, but, things that you want to avoid straight out of the glove and a locked out elbow um, as soon as our elbow is locked out our path becomes inefficient and it's a problem it leads to a lot of a lot of in injury concerns um, just generally makes you inaccurate it's tough to find a release point consistently when you're locked out at any point um, so typically what I'm telling our guys is when the ball leaves your glove it's down out and up I'm just trying to make like a small circle so to speak um, we have some guys they they get a little bit back here okay I don't love it but as long as they have some semblance of 
flexion in their elbow, I don't mind it because they're still somewhat on a shorter plane. When they get back this way, if I can see the ball behind them and see extension behind them, if I'm playing catch with them, that's a problem. And we've got to, at that point, we've got to work on some things to get them uh, shortened back up where they're in an efficient arm path. Um, but as long as you think down, out, and up, you're going to stay in an efficient arm path almost all the time. As far as getting to a slot to throw, uh, it's, it's verbiage that I use a lot. And simply, everybody in the world that throws things hard gets around the same area when they are going to release. So getting in a slot to throw, or in a position to throw, everybody in the world that throws hard, the ball in their hand is somewhere around here. Okay, some guys are back here, like Justin Verlander's a little bit further back. Some guys are real tight to their body, but somewhere in this window, you have to get to in order to throw a ball hard and accurately. Um, so I talk to our guys all the time, making sure you're in a window to throw, making sure you're in a window to throw, making sure you're in a window to throw. And a lot of that's gonna happen with your hips, a lot of that's gonna happen with your timing, which we'll get to at a certain point. Um, and as long as you're down, out, and up, a lot of that'll take care of itself. But if you're struggling, a lot of times the first thing you should look at, am I ever getting to a window to throw? Okay, well, I'm missing high and arm side. Well, I'm never really getting there where I can be on time. Maybe I'm somewhere out here, and now I'm off time. Now I'm pulling, now I'm opening up. My body's making adjustments for my arm not being where it needs to be. Um, and it's creating all kinds of problems, okay? Which, again, is very common. And the last thing we'll talk about is the glove side real quick. You have two options with your glove side. You can either kill it or tuck it. Um, as long as your shoulders are square, I don't care what you do other than going too far this way. Um, and a lot of this is gonna happen down the mound and the follow through, that kind of stuff. But typically your glove side is gonna be up, okay? People do it a ton of different ways, but you talk about the scarecrow, kind of, a, kind of an archaic idea in baseball. You're pointing down your elbow in the line of sight, okay? That's where your shoulder should be. That's where your glove should be. People are all over the map. Some of them do it this way. Some of them do it this way. Some of them do it this way. It's all over the place. But they're all from shoulder to elbow down the line of sight. Um, and when that follow through happens, they either just kill it, like literally just boom, glove side, glove side, and kind of dead. And it's just there. Or they'll get like a good pull and they'll pull it up against themselves. Okay, notice I'm not pulling this way, which is a common problem. I'm pulling up into my body, it keeps me square for a long time, keeps me square for a long time, and then I can go and I never lose my shoulders, I never lose my hips. When we get too far on this side of it, I lose my shoulders really early, I'm exposed here, my timing can be off, I pretty much have to be right on time to deliver a ball, uh, accurately deliver a ball efficiently and hard thanks for tuning in we will have more for you next week i know we we covered a lot today uh and we got plenty more to go through it um, but i hope everybody's staying safe and we'll see you next week